was ejected from the crater and eventually a small portion of it returned to the crater as a blanket of fallback material. The gray onoping member has all the features that indicate that it was deposited rapidly as one very thick sheet. The position of the black onoping member could be regarded as a recycling process or a powerful wash-in process, bringing the fallback debris from outside of the crater back into the crater by a gigantic tsunami-like wave. This is in agreement with the largely unsorted lower half of the black onoping member and evidence of reworking by water in the upper half of the member. The igneous textured melt rocks in the onoping formation are interpreted to be a direct product of shock metamorphism totally melting the target rock. Indications are that the target rocks were originally gneisses as petrologic mixing calculations do indicate. By comparison to other impact structures, the Sudbury structure has relatively little melt rock, as indicated by this distribution pattern in the onoping formation. Some of the early investigators have suggested that perhaps some of this melt is represented in the Sudbury igneous complex itself, or that perhaps much of it is still lying buried at depth in the onoping formation. More recently, it has been proposed that perhaps much of the Sudbury igneous complex is impact melt itself, as some of the isotopic data on neodymium and samarium indicate. The sum total of the evidence on shock metamorphism at Sudbury leaves little doubt that this process was operational on a grand scale. By comparison to the established impact craters, such as the Meteor Crater in Arizona and others, essentially the same shock features are present in these structures in terms of pressure and temperature effects. The differences lie mainly in the size and age between these structures. At Sudbury in particular, the total volume of shocked rock is gigantic and gives us a feeling of the magnitude of the impact, producing a final crater about 190 kilometers in diameter. No known volcanism, magmatism or tectonism has been shown so far that has produced or can produce the multiplicity of shock features and the volume of rocks that have been affected by the shock metamorphism as the rocks at Sudbury. And finally, in answer to those that accept shock metamorphism but argue that it is too much coincidence for a meteorite to have impacted at the present day Sudbury structure site, we can point to the impact scarred face of the moon where there are numerous examples of impact scars superimposed on older impact scars. Well, at Sudbury, we have such an example. The Lake Wanapate area, which is what we are looking at present, is another impact structure superimposed on the Sudbury structure on the East Range. It has the whole spectrum of pressure and temperature shock features, in-country rocks and glasses, as well as the shatter cones. Its fallback debris is just about the same in many respects as in the onoping formation. Whereas the Sudbury structure had a long history, some 1.85 billion years, and its rocks are recrystallized and altered, the Lake Wanapate rocks are as fresh as when they were formed 37 million years ago. The present elliptical shape of the Sudbury Basin is just part of a much larger Sudbury structure. Its elliptical shape now is essentially due to the long and complex later deformational history that Sudbury area has gone through. 